What we see here is a very popular Ublox uh, Neo 6 MGPS module which comes with a patch antenna you can see. So when you buy this device in a market you usually doesn't get this together. You buy these two components together by the way but they come separate like this. So if I can remove this, you can get two different components, right? So as you can see here, you have a patch antenna and here you have a Neo 6M GPS module, right? And you can easily connect this patch antenna to this uh, Neo 6M module is by taking this uh, patch antenna and just hook it up to this UFL connector, right? It's very easy. You just plugged in and it's been there. Okay, so basically if we try to understand this module completely, we might get the first thing like in the center, the heart of this module is this Neo 6 MGPS chip. Then we have an EPROM, this little chip is an EPROM. Then we have a button cell. Usually this uh, button cell and EPROM together used to retain a clock and the last position that this GPS module, GPS chip has finished. It basically helps in our project to uh, to reduce the time to first flight. Now, what is time to first flight and all other technical things we will discuss a bit later. But uh, just try to understand right now that we have a Neo 6M GPS chip, we have an EPROM and we have a button cell to retain the information of clock and last position. Then we have um, this four pins. Okay, you can see four pins here. VCC, RX, TX and ground. These are the pins by using which you will going to connect this module to your Arduino project. Okay, it's very simple. The connection is very simple. Uh, I don't rather, I don't want to get into too much of a detail in the beginning. First, we will going to connect this device to Arduino and then we will going to read a data, GPS data, uh, latitude and longitude. So let's first learn how to connect this uh, Neo 6 MGPS module to Arduino Uno. So as you can see, when you buy this uh, module, you will not get this pin soldered, right? So what I mean to say is you have this four pins, right? We have a ground, TX, RX and VCC and we don't get this pin soldered uh, right out of the box. We have to solder the pins externally, okay? And by using these four pins, we will going to connect this module to an Arduino. So let me take Arduino, okay? Let me put this module to the breadboard, okay? Like this. And then to start the connection, I want to have a jumper wire. So I will going to connect this VCC pin of an GPS module to 3.3 volt on Arduino Uno. So this is 3.3 volt. Make sure you don't connect to the 5 volt because uh, the rating uh, the voltage rating for this uh, Neo 6 MGPS chip is 2.3 volt to 3.6 volt. So if you connect this VCC to the 5 volts, you will fry this chip, right? So we have connected this VCC pin from the GPS module to 3.3 volt on Arduino. Then we must take another pin, okay, and connect to the RX pin on the module to the RX pin on Arduino Uno. Okay, you can see RX pin. The second one from the right is RX, connect to the RX on Arduino. Then we can take another jumper wire and connect a TX pin on this module to the TX pin on Arduino. The connection is quite simple. Um, GX connects to TX, RX connects to RX, VCC connects to 3.3 volt and then we have to take another jumper wire we should connect to the ground pin of an GPS module to the ground pin on Arduino and I can take any ground pin either here or here I would prefer to go with this one okay and as you can see right now this Socket setup is done and we can upload the code and read the data from this GPS module, right? Uh, the only thing you have to make sure is when we upload the code from Arduino We must disconnect the pins, right? This TX and RX. So we can upload the code 
okay once the code upload is done then we can connect back this pins tx and rx the reason is because uh, when we upload the code it uses tx rx pin in order to upload the code into the chip and uh, once the code is uploaded then this pin will be free tx and rx and then we connect back to our arduino so this is how we will going to set up a socket of uh, to read the data from the GPS module and then we will going to read the data. What you see on my screen is a bare minimum code which includes a setup function and a loop function. To test this GPS module which is Ublox Neo 6M you don't even have to write a single line of code. If you're lazy enough then you can go to file and click on new and you will get this new sketch or program and then you can simply go to file and save as this file just the way I have saved this this program as a GPS underscore Arduino right so what we need to do is we just have to upload this bare minimum code on our Arduino and then we will start testing this GPS module because this GPS module will continuously broadcasting um, a data GPS data from the device just one thing that we have to note while we upload this Arduino sketch on our Arduino program we must remove TX and RX pin from Arduino and once the process of uploading is done then we can connect this back again right so let me hit the upload button so this will upload the sketch on Arduino before that you just have to make sure you have uh, selected right board and comport so once that is fine then you can then you have to connect TX and RX pins so I will connect the TX pin from the module GPS module to the TX on Arduino and let me open up the serial monitor and as you can see uh, I am receiving some garbage value because um, the default uh, baud rate from this GPS chip is 9600 so we must select the baud rate 9600 so I will click on this drop down menu and select 9600 baud rate and now as you can see my GPS is started broadcasting the GPS data so in a beginning it takes a little bit of time somewhere around 20-25 um, seconds cold start now what is cold start what is hot start we will discuss in another lessons but uh, right now your GPS module is searching for the satellites it takes somewhere 20-25 seconds as I said so you have to wait until your data gets stabilized you can see the one parameter that we will be monitoring let me stop the auto scroll and you can see we are looking for this GPGLL so this is a geo positions latitude and longitude and you can see there are very few data points that we are getting so we are expecting lot more things here so if I start auto scroll once again and you will see in a couple of seconds or minutes we will start receiving the full fledged data which we can later on use uh, to track the positions now if you wonder what is this data that is broadcasting on our serial monitor then I can tell you this is what it's called NEMA sentences NEMA N-M-E-A NEMA I don't know whether the pronunciation is correct or not but NEMA is, is a protocol uh, which most of the GPS devices supports in order to read the, the latitude and longitude and other GPS data from the devices now we will be using this NEMA sentences like GPGLL what I shown you earlier and then we will extract the latitude and longitude information from that particular NEMA sentence right so we are waiting for this um, this, this data to, to settle down and uh, this is called first time fix or something like that um, it's like when you power on your GPS module then it takes a time to search for satellites and once the satellite location is fixed it will give you a fixed location um, to track the data as you can see right now we are getting an entire 
you know string correctly so what I'm going to do is I will going to stop this auto scroll and now I can show you that we have now a complete Nema sentence a complete string that we are looking for right so I will going to copy this GPGLL uh, Nema sentence string okay and uh, let me copy this and then we have to go to this URL called free nmea.net so here we will get a NEMA NMEA decoder so I will click on this you will find this link in in the description YouTube description so I will paste this URL here I mean not URL but a NEMA sentence and then, then I will pass the value and you can see right now I'm getting the location so this is where the the graph should be expected so I will zoom out this and hopefully you will see right now I'm in India and I am here near to Grand Hayat right you can see uh, this is my exact location this is the building where I am I'm not going to expose what it is here but rather you can see it tracks the exact positions so here it says like 18 degree and 33 point uh, 36 33 minutes and whatever that it is so I would going to click on this positions and it will take me to the location so we'll get the exact location look at this so here I am into the Vimanagar near to airport in India and if I can zoom in you can see this is my exact location in India right so it's very easy um, to use this module and in the next lesson maybe we will going to extract only latitude and longitude which is what we are interested in order to locate the position right now if you wonder then what what about this all other data right so what about this all other data this GPGLLGP uh, what it is GPRMC this is like uh, a geo positions uh, minimum um, uh, parameters and GP GGA GP um, GSV or whatever you know if you want to know more about this I would recommend you to come and visit this website this is gprs.git.nl slash nmea I will put down this description box in the YouTube description and you will see interpreted sentences so uh, the one that we were using is gpgll and other are listed here so you can click on any one that you are interested in so if I click on this one it will give me more details about this so if I go back here and let's say if I take this GPGLL then you can see the first uh, parameter is the time it takes to fix right I hope this is correct <laughs> okay okay latitude and longitude I think it gives first a latitude this this first is a latitude look at this it says first is a latitude so this one is a latitude um, in a north then a longitude right you can look at this they have given for every um, uh, little um, data points which is separated by comma and then we have after latitude and longitude we have this is nothing but a time to fix um, time taken to fix uh, the GPS location and then we have this A that stands for uh, the status uh, which is a valid data and then we get a checksum so this is how you will going to read your NEMA sentences uh, this website is very great you can just click on anyone that you are interested in it's not a scope in this tutorial but I will cover it later in the in the next uh, lesson okay so I hope you will find this video educational and entertaining um, I will be very happy if you like this video and subscribe to the channel thank you very much and see you into the next lesson bye bye